Do you know what day it is today? Saturday. It's a special day. Well, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I'm looking at the glasses here, and this is not the right shape for Petrus. <laughs> so I'm guessing no Petrus. No Petrus. <laughs> uh, okay, so, yeah. look on the bright side of things. These are flutes. Yeah. For sure it's bubbles, but is it the real thing? It's the real thing. Oh, really? Yeah. All champagne? All champagne. Petrus can wait. <laughs> I'm Peter! <laughs> <laughs> Although if you do happen to have Petrus, I, I'll have it out of this glass, it's okay. Uh, okay, too much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break. And how many glasses have we got? Seven. So we are going to taste the seven... Seven champagnes. Champagnes. What a treat. Yeah. Good Enix, let's go. <laughs> Some viewers, they are curious why we always use flutes for sparkling wines. Ha. Huh. Because, okay. you know, many people, in many restaurants particularly, they use the regular glasses instead of uh, champagne flutes. It's an interesting question, and Jay and I needed to answer that for ourselves. We actually did a tasting where we tasted champagne mm -hmm. out of flutes and various other shapes of glasses as well. And we decided at the time that flutes were the best. Champagne is the most gorgeous, sexy of drinks. Yeah. It takes so much effort and energy and knowledge and trouble and investment to put that beautiful pearly little bubble in the glass. Mm -hmm. What could be better than having a long slim glass like this? And we'll take pictures of it where you put the wine in there and you see these lazy bubbles slowly meandering through the wine to reach the surface and pop. Yeah. It's the most gorgeous, sexy thing. You almost make me cry. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it is. It's the most gorgeous, sexy thing. Yeah. So, do I go for the sexiness or do I go for the terroir where you pretty much obliterate the fact that the wine is sparkling except for on the tongue. Mm -hmm. You don't see the lazy meandering of these tiny, tiny, tiny little bubbles through the beautiful wine. You don't see that. No. But do you get a better sense of character. Uh -huh. I have to be completely honest. For me, the choice is flutes. However, I have noticed some very rare wines. I was on a trip to a Champagne with the Institute of Masters of Wine three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. And there's no question that we were in the houses of some growers mm -hmm. where there was small growers, where there was an element of terroir that came through on the larger glasses. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to be perhaps a little bit more in favor of the new chic cool wine flutes which are pretty much f a combination a sort of like a hybrid glass it's shaped like in, in almost like the tulip shape mm -hmm. of a fine white wine glass or red wine glass for that matter but then long so that you've got the tulip shape to develop the terroir mm -hmm. a little bit more but then the concentration so that you can still see the lazy bubbles now I'm keen to try out those glasses, I'm not convinced yet, mm -hmm. but I have noticed that many of the champagne houses are now using them. I would prefer to sacrifice, if I had to make the choice, to sacrifice terroir for sexiness. Me too, because otherwise we miss the beauty. Absolutely. The beauty of the bubbles and... Yeah. Yeah. Just, create, just opening a bottle of wine, particularly champagne, is in and of itself an event. It's a special occasion, even if it's, you know, on a Saturday afternoon with In-N-Out Burger. <laughs> <laughs> you miss the burgers. <laughs> <laughs> and the acid of the champagne cuts through the fat on the burger. <laughs> We've done some experiment with uh, those uh, champagne glasses and regular glasses to taste the champagnes. I've repeated that kind of experiment uh, at home multiple times but for the most of the champagne the flutes were better i'm i'm absolutely fine with that i do get a bouquet mm -hmm. from champagne obviously i love the yeasty bready character and i believe that the smaller aperture here concentrates that yeah and that the name champagne is associated with ultimate quality we cannot have you something that is legitimately called champagne that is not good so even your basic level of champagne is a guarantee of quality. You heard it here. You're not angry at me, right? <laughs> You're just passionate, right? Just passionate. <laughs>
Just passionate. He scared me. No, he no, no, scared no, me no. a little bit. Oh, sorry. No, <laughs> not angry with you, Adam. I'm enjoying this very much. I wish you'd put some wine in the damn glass, <laughs> but I'm enjoying this. I will. Okay. So I prepared the seven most usual, easily seen champagnes for okay. today. So pretty much then, if they're all the entry level champagnes and all the grand marks, so to speak. Yeah, right. What we all got to do is is decide something, which is a, a fascinating exercise which is to see if you and I can come to agreement, not on which one is the, the Boulanger or the Mums or Roder or whatever it is, mm -hmm. but which one is the best. Yeah, right. So the price range is pretty similar. Right, so I would imagine that the price range is between, say, just under 35 to 45, something like that, more or less. Great. Okay. You're right. Okay. Shall we begin? Let's do it. Yeah, the first bottle. Oh, it comes in its own red velvet. <laughs> this must be the good one. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Bubbles make me excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's only wine geeks like us that get excited by bubbles. <laughs> like children. <laughs> exactly. Oh, look at that. Yes. Oh, yes, indeedy doody. <laughs> Our viewers were expecting me to serve you some crap wines because we tasted the ground <laughs> the first cross Bordeaux last weekend. You know, as as it so happens, Jay, you have served some crap wine. Yeah. But there are wines that needed to be tasted blind. Yeah. And I'm okay with that because not only is it a valuable service to the people who watch us. It's important for us not to become snobs. Yeah, right. It's important for you and I to understand that while we may have so much passion that we consider it okay to pay $35 to $40 for a, a wine to have with the barbecue, the vast majority of viewers out there don't do that. Right. And there's a hell of a lot of wine out there that at very low prices that is more than drinkable. And we cannot be such snobs. We have to taste that wine. and. There's some drinkable wine out there and we, we need to say, these are the ones. We, we did that. Yeah. You remember? We did that with the barefoot and the yellow tail and... Yeah. We are going to do that again. No! <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> no, too late. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> it's recorded. <laughs> The only thing that was worse from an oak perspective than this is the bourbon barrel wines. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> now I'm happy to do that, to keep us honest, Jay. The whole thing that we have to do all the time is we have to make sure that not only do we know that we're honest, that we are perceived to be honest. You know, this is just, we are treating ourselves and vicariously we are treating you. But yes, there's some very good drinking that we will be happy to recommend at much lower prices than, than these. There is no excuse at whatever price to put out bad wine. There's no excuse. No excuse? No. We declare that sentence for those kind of people. Uh, you know, I don't believe in the death penalty. So, I, I don't, so because I don't believe in the death penalty, I don't want to sort of generically say we declared. But every now and again, as you know, we do taste the wines of some people where the winemaker deserves the death penalty. Yeah. Yeah. Usually it's not for the cheapest wines. No, no. Like those bourbon <laughs> cask wines. You, know. <laughs> you remember it. It gives me a crushing weight on my chest. <laughs> yeah. That's the bad memories I think about. <laughs> right. It's not fair because your glasses are way bigger than mine. I think it's fair. <laughs> if it were poor wine, I would think it's unfair. But since it's good wine, I think it's fair. Okay, the last one. It's a little bit trickier. It's like... easy to tell what that one is. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Carr Salmon. I've probably not talked about that before. I love Bilkas Salmon. Aren't you sponsored by Bicar Salmon to say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all seven champagnes are served. Wow, it's beautiful. Beautiful bubbles. Mm. The beautiful bubbles meandering and it will be even even nicer when they've settled down a little it's almost as sexy as my wife oh there you go <laughs> 
Well, imagine how much sexy it would be if you have the sexy champagne and the sexy wife. <laughs> For me with champagne, I nose them all, sparkling wines first, because usually champagne has got such a strong signature. So before I sort of dull my palate a little bit with tasting them, I nose them. I'll do the same thing. Oh, you don't have to. I mean, you know how to taste champagne. You've had plenty in your life. <laughs> What were you looking for? In one champagne, I found lots of oxidized reserve. There was one There was one that had a little bit of that. I liked it. And there was one that I thought had some oak. But overall, it's beautiful tasting, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm very, very impressed. You know, we hear so often, particularly from the cool kids sommeliers, the grain marks, they don't know what they're doing. You know, they're making the standardized product. And then I taste through these wines. Each one of these wines shows you class and breeding are they the best? No. There were some here that were a little too sweet for me. There were some that were a little bland. But every single wine was elegant, well-made and balanced. Just looking at the colors, they all seem to have a, a faint tinge of something earth or pink in it. So there's no Blanc de Blanc in here, I would say. No. A lovely bunch of wines. Our viewers would love to see you smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, nothing not to smile about here. Uh, the only complaints? would be some of the wines were a little uh, too generically champagne meaning they were exactly what they were supposed to be but not more mm -hmm. there are two here that i would like to drink more than the others okay for me there are three of them uh, okay <laughs> so shall we talk about the champagne number one it didn't have as lively a mousse mm -hmm. the bubbles as some of them but one must be careful about criticizing the mousse because there's all sorts of things that affect the mousse including the glass did you wash the glass with soap mm -hmm. is it a brand new glass does it have some dust on it or, or something like that it's less about how much effervescence there is and more about the quality of the bubble is it really really tiny it was very elegant but a little bland mm -hmm. the palate the entry was lovely there was a bit of sweetness again but i found the wine was round and balanced no wine had really long length they were all medium length but they were clean elegant balanced clean is a derogatory term mm -hmm. meaning Hell, if my wine's not clean, why should I pay a dollar for it, never mind $45 for it? But when I say clean, I mean clean from the perspective of nothing that detracts from the wine on the palate. So you mean the purity yeah. of the taste? Yeah, nothing that detracts from the wine on the palate. I found them round and balanced, yeah. medium length. I said it's a lovely drink. Mm -hmm. It's one of my better wines, which I'm surprised at because in the beginning I thought it wasn't. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's, it's also one of my better wines. Okay. I smelled some brioche in it. It yeah. was not strong. And you said it smelled almost uh, sweet. Yeah. I smelled lots of ripe peach. It was sweet yeah. nose for me. Yeah. And it was gentle, subtle, medium length with a medium body with uh, some correct acidity. I liked it. Okay, so our, our notes are pretty much the same. Uh-huh. All right. Okay, shall we see the wine? Yeah, let's have a look at them. Okay, so champagne number one. The velvet one. Yeah. Veuve Clicquot. Clico. Actually, Veuve Clicquot never disappoints us. No. No. It's impressive. It's lovely. Yeah, it's lovely. This one is my favorite one. It was my third favorite. Okay. Yeah. Champagne number two. Obviously the colors are, are all pretty much similar. This had a very small mousse. It was weightier, this one, at least on the nose. Mm -hmm. And then on the palate, it bore that out. It was more full-bodied, very easy to drink, lovely balance, beautiful wine. This is one of my top scoring wines. Lots of brioche again. I smell too much brioche. Too much brioche? Yeah. It's like too much gold or too much money. Yeah, too much gold. <laughs> <laughs> No, I love the brioche character. So for you, it was over the top. Okay, I, I can see why you're there because it's very powerful brioche. Yeah, yeah. it was too champagne. Okay. <laughs> I complain. <laughs> he complains because it's too much what he spent so much money to go and buy. <laughs> yeah. How's that? Not logical. <laughs> Not logical, but Not I logical. feel good. But continue to be humane. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Champagne number two. Let's see what that is. That was my second favorite. This one is uh, Laurent Perrier. I always associate Laurent Perrier with very elegant wines. And yet I found this one to be very full-bodied. Yeah, it was very toasty. Yeah. Champagne number three. Very beautiful mousse. It's now dying down, but tiny, tiny little bubbles. On the nose, very complex. Mm -hmm. And you talked a little bit about fruit. You said you were measuring fruit. Now, were you looking for fruitiness? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. You want the fruitiness. Yeah. <laughs> I want dried fruit. Oh, dried fruit. I'm not saying you're wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you're full of shit. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Peter. I appreciate it. <laughs> this is another powerful wine. I do feel like it's a little astringent. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I do feel... At the finish. Yeah. yeah. It's weighty. Lovely acidity. And I think that the acidity is probably the same dosage as some of the others. But it tastes slightly drier because of the acidity. If you love elegance, uh -huh. this wine was more about power mm -hmm. than about elegance. I still like the wine a lot, but there are others here I would rather drink. Uh -huh. Not because the wine is lesser wine, but because stylistically. You know, and I, it, I, it's very important for me to make that clear to you. It's really wrong for me to express to you the style that I like. Because now we get down to personal preference, which may be different from your personal preference. And that's fine. Because we're not talking about quality. If we're talking about quality, then we can fight. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking about personal preference, yours is absolutely as important as mine and way more important to you, which is correct. I prefer to, to go to the side of elegance versus the side of power and weight, which is consistent with everything that I drink. I'm always looking for the elegance, the minerality, the complexity. Now, if I can get power, punch, minerality, <laughs> elegance, complexity, all at the same time, then I'm in heaven, okay? Yeah. Just like uh, last week. <laughs> <laughs> right. And champagne number three, Piper Heidsieck. Piper Heidsieck, okay. I have always liked Piper Heidsieck. Yeah, I liked it very much too. I didn't like that astringence no. to finish, but <laughs> the complexity of the wine, I liked it. I love the acidity on that one. Yeah. Champagne number four. Champagne number four. Number four was an interesting wine. It seemed to have a slightly less persistent bubble than the others, with slightly larger bubbles, a little rough compared to the others, a tad astringent, and not much brioche. I found the elegance, it's coming over and like much more astringent now, and a little rough, my lowest score amongst all of them, basically. What do you think? Overall, it was delicate and subtle, but at the back of my tongue, it was a little bit too alcoholic for me. Yeah. Do you still find it elegant? It's hard to tell if it is elegant or a little bit bland. Yeah. So I had both of those things uh. in this lineup, slightly clumsy. Finally, this one ended up being my least favorite. Yeah. I didn't like this either. Moet de Shangdong. Okay. All right. So we agreed that we agreed. shows the least quality. Champagne number five. This for me was different from the others. If there's any of the wines here that have been fermented in oak, this may be it. It's got a beautiful sexy mousse. The nose is quite fruity, which for me is not necessarily positive. There's a powerful entry on the palate. It's very complex. I love the balance. This was my best score. Yeah? Yeah. That's interesting because you found the balance between the oak barrel fermented characteristics and the champagne characteristics? Trust Jay to point out inconsistencies in the way I think. <laughs> He happy. knows me too well. <laughs> no, but it's true. You know, usually you could be sure that I would say the one with the oak uh -huh. is not right. But there's something about this wine where it feels like a little bit of oak, but it adds complexity. It adds interest. It adds layers of complexity. It's not quite as elegant as some of the others. But you know, it's the overall package. When I talk about the overall package, let's take Madonna. Madonna doesn't do anything the best. She's not the best singer. She's might argue with me about this. She's not the best looking girl. She's very good looking, but not the best. She doesn't have the best dance steps, but the package, she's the best. Uh -huh. So that's this wine. What do you think? For me, it has the most reserved wine among these uh, seven. And I didn't like that much that I felt that much a reserved wine in it because I prefer the freshness of the, the freshness other. and the purity of the one. But I agree with you that for the full package, it's like uh, Madonna. Yeah. <laughs> In the beginning, I told you the champagne tasting was difficult because it was very hard where I have to put the leverage, the purity or the full package. And you're quite right, because we are talking about quality. Each of these winemakers may or may not have a different view mm -hmm. of what they want to achieve. So one has to try and see behind what they want to achieve to try and figure out how close they got to it 
So it starts to get to the point of personal preference, mm -hmm. which we try to avoid here, which is why you're having the problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then Jay will say, well, which one do you want to drink? And I'll say, I want to drink wine number four or five or whatever it might be. It's not the best quality here, but it's the one I like the most. But it's the question I ask myself last. It's yeah. our responsibility to you. Probably that was the reason why I almost uh, emptied the barrel fermented Mundavi private reserve when I had burgers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. For quality tasting, it was the worst. <laughs> But with burgers, it was so tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Champagne number five. That was my best. Yeah, I love the full package. Okay, Madonna Champagne. What is this? It's uh, André Couloué. This one is super famous in my country. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, see, look look at the label. A Grand Cru? It shows the quality of the grapes. It's 100% vineyards. It was not expensive at all. No, because nobody it, knows it. It was in the same price range. Beautiful wine. Mm -hmm. Vif Glico was more expensive than this. Because nobody ever heard of Clouet. And everybody's heard of Vif Glico. Uh, there is a silver label one. It's a little bit cheaper than this one. Ah, okay, so you didn't buy the entry-level one. Entry-level one? I couldn't find it. Oh, you couldn't find it, yeah. okay. But I thought this one was entry-level enough. It was entry-level on price, but not for the, for the house. That is true. I'm a little bit worried about Korean market because it's going to get sold out. <laughs> <laughs> champagne number six. For me, Champagne six exemplifies the style. The entry-level wine, it's a sort of average of them all. There are better wines here. Yeah. Most of them, in fact. Yeah, I really agree. It's okay, but it's not special. No. Champagne number six, Perrier Jouet, Grand Bru. And so the other thing is this, if you find the wines a little sweet for you, chill them. That helps to bring down the expression of the sugar. So as these wines are warming up here now, so the sugar is becoming more obvious. Okay. Now you begin to complain. <laughs> if I'm going to drink some of these wines a little later, I'm sure Jay's not leaving them here, but if I'm going to drink some of these wines later, I'm going to chill them down again. <laughs> I'm going to leave some. <laughs> I'm going to leave the bottles that you like. <laughs> uh, no, you don't have to do that. You can just leave one. <laughs> All right. Then let's go to champagne number seven. Number seven. Had an okay mousse. It's a sort of flat, slightly brioche character. I get it, it's the lees. It doesn't show up as brioche, but it shows up as lees. Mm -hmm. This has probably got the leesiest character of all of them. It was a little bit similar to number six. Not very special, but was better. A, a little more delicate than number yeah. six. Uh -huh. Okay, champagne number seven. Bicker Salmon? <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> I don't think there's any big cut salmon in here. No. <laughs> oh, this one is mum. Beautiful bottle. I love the package. Yeah. That's a really beautiful tasting. You know, we keep hearing from the cool kids sommeliers. You can't drink these wines, the big house. I can drink. I can drink. <laughs> you can't drink these. You, you know, you have to drink, as I said. The <laughs> cool kids are out there. They would like, look at the guy with flutes. How can you trust him? <laughs> you can trust us. Yeah. <laughs> Trust us. What are the best three champagnes? Okay, for me, yeah. number five was the best. Number five? Yeah. Okay. Number two? Number two? Second best. Number one? Uh huh. Third best. Third best? No. Okay. Those are my, my three. Spectacular tasting, Jay. Yeah? Did you Absolutely, like it? Absolutely, I did. So, we recommend. Wine number one. You liked it? I liked it. Okay. And wine number two. Wine number one is a Vive Clico. We strongly recommend it. And a Laurent Perrier. Did you also like that one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, wine number it. two. I liked it very much too. And then André Clouet. Did you agree with me on the three best wines? I agree with uh, the top uh, best three wines. I just want to add one more, which is a uh, Piper Eidzig. Piper Eidzig, yeah. which was number three. Yeah. I didn't like that astringence at the end, but I liked the complexity. And I'm absolutely fine with that. Yeah. And your least favorite one was? Was the Moet. Yeah, for me too. Yeah. Yeah, for me too. Yeah. So did you like the tasting today? Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. I sure did. 
Peter. Cheers. Cheers, Jay. <laughs> we have to say subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. Give us some loves. Yeah. We love being with you. Give us some loves. Cheers. Yeah, support us with loves. <laughs> and we will continue to punish our livers by tasting good wine for you. Or bad wine. <laughs> no, no. Do you remember we tasted 29 bottles of red wine under $10? Do you ask me if I remember that? It's seared onto my chest with pain. <laughs> okay. We are going to taste only 26 bottles. You're kidding, right? I'm serious. Really? <laughs> I want you to choose a $5 bottle of wine. Yeah, so today there are lots of $5 wine. Yeah. <laughs> but there is better news than before because uh, they are all white. All white? Yeah. And why is it good news, remind me? <laughs> 이럴 땐이 와인 네이버 밴드로 놀러 오시면 와인을 잘 몰라도 편하고 싸게 사실 수 있도록 제가 많이 도와드립니다. 다들 만족하시고 좋아하시더라고요.